Hey, what's up everybody? Justin Sardi here from TubeSift.com. And today we have a really awesome video lined up for you. We're gonna be talking all about the targeting options you can use for YouTube ads, and then we'll be diving into exactly which ones you should use first, and my hierarchy of targeting, if you will. Now, there are a lot of different options that you can use, and some of those go even deeper, but today we're gonna to be talking about demographics, keywords, audiences, placements, topics, and then custom audiences as well. Now, demographics, this is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically gender, age, parental status, and household income. Now, you should know about these before you go into targeting your audience or setting up your ad campaign. You should know who you're targeting and exactly you know, what gender, what age, and uh, maybe not parental status or household income, but at least the gender and age. And I like to use demographics on every single campaign that I run. Uh, so I use demographics and then layer everything else on. And one thing that I do want to mention that I kind of forgot to mention in the beginning is when you're setting up multiple targeting uh, or multiple targeting options inside of one ad group, it's going to be and targeting. So as you layer, let's say demographics and keywords together, it's only going to target people that are in that demographic and searching for that specific keyword. So if you throw all of these all at once, all these ones I'm gonna be talking about today, all at once into one ad group, it's not going to work out very well for you because you're gonna restrict it heavily. So I like to choose maybe one or two and overlap them at the most. So let's keep on going. Now, the second option I'm gonna be talking about is audiences and audiences goes very, very deep. Audiences is where your remarketing lists are held. Uh, and if you're not remarketing, you're definitely leaving money on the table. But all your remarketing is in there. We have detailed demographics. We also have uh, affinity and custom affinity audiences, as well as in-market life events and custom intent audiences. And then we also have, like I said, remarketing and similar to audiences, as well as combined audiences. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the custom audiences that you can set up. So the first one I wanna talk about is custom affinity audiences. Now affinity audiences are essentially people that are interested in a specific topic based on their browsing history. So you could create custom affinity audiences. Uh, you can also use the predefined affinity audiences. Those work really well. But if you can't find one that is in there, you can actually create your own custom affinity audience. And as you can see on the screen right here, you can actually create these audiences based on their interests. You can throw some keywords in there for their interests. You can take specific URLs that they are visiting and place those in there. You can also go to different places that they have been visiting or different apps they are using. So you can choose all of those different things when setting up a custom affinity audience, and that can all be done through your audience manager in your Google Ads account. Now, the second type of custom audience, and, and these work extremely well, are custom intent audiences. So in Google Ads, they have intent audiences or in-market audiences, and essentially what those are, are people who are actively shopping or searching for a product or service. Now, these audiences work extremely well for e-commerce, um, you know, car dealers, things like that, because think about it, when you are shopping for a product, you might jump over to Google or YouTube and do a quick search for um, you know, this product versus that product or something along those lines. And when you do that, Google knows what you're searching for and then knows that you are interested or actively shopping for one of these products or services. Now, if you can't find one of those, you can always create a custom audience based on intent. Now, this is really cool because you can actually create a custom audience based on Google search terms and also in market keywords. So those will be those buyer keywords and also any of the keywords they have searched for on Google. Essentially, using those Google keywords allows you to bypass using Google search and paying that high uh, PPC cost that's associated with some of these different uh, keyword searches and push those over to YouTube. So whenever somebody is on YouTube, you can then show them your video ad and reach them for much cheaper than you could with traditional Google PPC. Now, the next targeting option we're gonna talk about is keywords. Now, keywords are extremely powerful for one, or for a lot of reasons, but the number one reason that they're so powerful is that YouTube is the second largest search engine on the web behind Google. And like we just mentioned with custom intent audiences, you can also target them based on their Google search terms. 
However, uh, keywords is a little bit different. So keywords are basically the keywords they're searching for on YouTube. Now these type, uh, this type of targeting works extremely well for video discovery ads as well as in-stream ads. Uh, and the way that it works is you basically find the keywords that people are searching for. Now, what I like to do is use the auto suggest keywords that YouTube gives us because you know that those are the keywords that people are actually searching for. Now, the easiest way to find those besides going over to YouTube and doing it the manual way is jumping on over to TubeSift using our keyword tool and it will basically take your keyword and then throw the letter A all the way to Z behind that and give you all of those actually searched keywords that people are searching for on YouTube. And you just plug those right into the keyword tab when you're setting up your campaign. So the next targeting option we're gonna be talking about is topics. And essentially what topics allow you to do is target your audience based on the topic of video that they are watching on YouTube. One thing that's important to note is that it's not just videos on YouTube when you're using topics. And if you choose a topic, let's say automotive or something like that, it can also place your video ad on other relevant sites such as whatever autoblogger.com or you know cars and trucks magazine.com provided they allow video ads so using topic targeting will also place your ad across the google display network and from what i've found ads on the google display network video ads on the google display network tend not to work as well so I tend to avoid topics or use them as a last resort, but we'll talk about that a little bit when we get into the hierarchy of targeting. One of my favorite ways to target is by targeting placements. Now, essentially what placements allow you to do is put your video ad in front of monetized videos. Now, a monetized video is a video that allows an advertisement to be shown in front of it. Now, this can be an in-stream ad or a video overlay ad. And if you haven't checked out our video on video overlay ads and the free training on how to set that up, definitely check that out. That's also on our blog and we'll link to that um, below this or in the video description as well. So what placements allow you to do, like I said, is put your video ad in front of hyper relevant videos that you know your audience is going to be watching. This is the lowest possible hanging fruit when it comes to running YouTube ads, because if you think about it, let's say you run a plumbing company and your specialty is unclogging drains. And somebody jumps onto YouTube, they have an urgent problem, their drain is overflowing right now, uh, or maybe their shower's not draining. And they jump onto YouTube, look for how to unclog a shower drain or something like that. Right then, they need to unclog their shower drain. So if you run a plumbing company in their area and you want to put an ad, or you do, you put an ad in front of that video saying, hey, uh, we're ABC Plumbing down in Austin, Texas, and we can jump over to your house. We're on call 24 seven to help you unclog drains. Call us today, right? What do you think is gonna happen? Odds are you are going to gain a new customer. And this works extremely well in any niche. Maybe you're a dog trainer. Maybe you sell baby products. It just makes sense that these type of targeting works so well because you are literally putting your video ad and your product or solution in front of somebody at the exact moment they are searching for what you have to offer. That's why placement targeting is my personal favorite. The way to find placements is to jump over to YouTube. You can do it the manual way where you jump over to YouTube, search for your keyword, click on a video, see if it has an ad, copy that video URL, go back and forth and do that forever. Or you can also use TubeSift, which our placement finder is extremely easy to use. You just type in a keyword, hit enter, and you'll find all of the monetized videos for that keyword up to 300 per search. And you can essentially quickly and easily find all of the relevant videos that allow you to place your ad in front of them and see a massive ROI from your advertising campaign. So we've covered exactly what targeting options are available to advertisers when they're running ads on YouTube, but all targeting options are not created equally, which is why we have our hierarchy of targeting over here at TubeSift. Now this is the order that I start with um, from the most effective audiences to the least effective audiences. And this has been tested over millions of dollars of ad spend, tons of students, and tons of TubeSift clients. So this has been very proven to be effective. Now you might find different, but this is where I like to start. Now, first targeting option that I always like to use, if I have it, is retargeting. These people are already familiar with you. They already know who you are. They already know about your brand, something like that. 
And if you have a retargeting list, maybe you have a customer list that you upload, obviously those people, hopefully they've already had a uh, positive experience with your business and they're gonna be way easier to convert into a customer, right? So I like to start with that. From there, I also use similar to audiences, which are basically like lookalike audiences on Facebook and Google automatically creates those when you have retargeting lists. So those things, if you have them, those are a great place to start. From there, I jump over to placements. So like I talked about on the placements targeting option, it's drop dead simple and the easiest, lowest hanging fruit on YouTube. Because if somebody's searching for a product or service and you can put that product or service in front of them at the exact moment they're searching for what you have to offer, kind of makes sense, right? Then I move to keywords. Now keywords are great because you can use those Google search terms. You can use intent keywords and buyer keywords. So I like to go, you know, remarketing, placements, keywords, and then I jump to the in-market audiences. Now these in-market audiences work extremely well if you are an e-commerce seller or you sell something that is in one of the categories that's available. From there, I like to jump over to combined audiences. Now, combined audiences are essentially an audience, but what you can do is layer things on top of each other. So let's say you're trying to target um, entrepreneurs that are into fitness, right? Maybe you run a high-end coaching for you know, high-performing entrepreneurs or something like that. Uh, or maybe you're a personal trainer specializing in high-performing entrepreneurs. So you can actually layer business owners on top of people that are interested in fitness and target people like that. And I actually did that for a client of mine recently and we saw amazing results by overlaying two different audience types and really narrowing it down. However, it did narrow our reach but it didn't matter because it literally cut our cost per lead by about five times, which was absolutely insane, just by using a combined audience. So those work extremely well. From there, I like to jump over to the in-market life events and custom intent audiences. Those also work really well uh, once you kind of get your offer proven. From there, I moved to affinity audiences and very last, and I'm not even gonna say, but not least because I hate topic targeting, topic targeting. Uh, topics tend to be, like I said, they do show across the Google Display Network. I think that's one of the reasons they don't work as well. But another reason is people constantly tag their videos incorrectly on YouTube. And that definitely messes with that algorithm a little bit. So um, that's exactly what we start with. Um, if you're brand new, I recommend starting with placements, which you can find very easily with TubeSift. That about wraps up the targeting options and which targeting options you should start with. Now you can always jump on over to tubesift.com, sign up for a membership over there and quickly and easily knock out your placements, your keywords, and all of your video banners, all that good stuff. Uh, we have the banner design studio and everything there. Now, if you liked this video, please give us that thumbs up if you're watching it on YouTube. Please subscribe to our channel and uh, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. We have all kinds of awesome content heading your way. And as always, if you go to tubesift.com, you can get yourself an awesome TubeSift membership and really dial in your targeting when it comes to running ads on YouTube. That's it for me. Bye for now.